Hi, in today's video I'm carrying on with the uh, TS-H874 video that we did last. Um, in the last one we converted it from QUTS Hero to QTS and I'm still running that now. Um, this video I wanted to talk about how to get Plex up and running um, on the NAS. Um, but just for some um, added information, I've also put uh, an NVIDIA graphics card in the PCIe slots here uh, just to make the uh, transcoding have even more capability than using the onboard graphics that this NAS comes with. Uh, so I have already installed the graphics card in the NAS um, and enabled it for QTS. Uh, once you put the card in, um, it isn't assigned to anything, so the first thing you've got to do is come to the control panel. Um, and in control panel, at the top right, you've got an option for hardware. At the top of that, hardware resources is what you need. And then in here, we can see that the uh, NVIDIA card is set. And in mine, I've already set it to QTS mode. Now, in a lot of cases, um, you'll just have a dash there in the top uh, of the box before you expand it down and when you first select QTS mode it'll say something along the lines of you don't have the driver installed just click OK on that message and it'll launch the app center at the correct driver just click um, install on that file it, it is a large file it does take a while but once it is installed you can come back to this screen and it should then let you select QTS mode uh, once QTS mode is selected just to verify everything's working if you click on the dashboard at the top right you can then click on the uh, resource monitor wording there um, and on the left click on system resource and choose graphics card and um, so long as the NVIDIA card is showing here everything is set up that uh, the NVIDIA card that you've added in is now being used by QTS and therefore so complex it can use it as well. Um, so now that's done, um, now there's a couple of ways to go about installing Plex. You can just come straight to the App Center, go to the Entertainment category and click Install on the version that's there. It is usually quite an old version, um, I think it only gets updated in the App Center four or five times a year. Um, so what I prefer to do is I actually go to the Plex website, um, I go to the uh, download option at the top and go to Plex Media Server. Now when you're in there, it'll select a uh, application for your computer because it knows I'm on a Mac. Um, but what you do is you just do the drop down, go down to the uh, NAS and QNAP category, and then you can click choose package. Now there's four different versions. For this particular NAS, we need the top one because it's an Intel CPU, so I need the top one. Um, I'm not going to download it, I've already got it downloaded, um, but that's how I get the very latest version here. So this is 1.29. Uh, point one is the one that I'm running. Uh, the one in the App Center is only on 1.28.0 at the moment. So that's why I like to go get uh, the latest version from Plex directly. Once you've got the file downloaded, you just click the uh, install, manual, uh, install manually button at the top right of the App Center. Browse to it on your local machine. So in my case, it's the top option. So I'm going to open that. Um, so there it is. And I'm just going to click the install option. Um, now this only takes a couple of minutes to install. Um, and once this is done, it'll add it to the desktop of the NAS so that you can um, click it, open it. It'll open up in a new uh, browser window so that you can go through and, and go through the initial setup wizard um, of Plex. Now, the setup wizard will be very different for everybody. Um, so once you've got it um, set up, your media and things sorted out, um, I'll show you how I've got mine done. Um, I do have just a single share on the NAS called Media. And in there, I put a, fo a file called Black Adam, which is just the trailer for Black Adam to demonstrate this. Um, all I've done with the file is just call it Black Adam with the year of the movie um, so that it can um, scrape that file name and go find the information once it finds it within Plex. Um, so that's all I've done now. Typically you might do like a movies, TV shows, music folder within this media folder uh, and then you can give um, Plex the different paths for the different types of media uh, so that it knows when it's looking in a folder is it looking for movie data, TV data, music data. Um, but in this I'm just doing a simplistic one here of just the, the single file there. Uh, so now Plex Media Server is installed, um, I can click the icon that's on the desktop and it will take me straight to the uh, setup wizard of Plex. So I'm just going to say I've got it, I know how it works. Um, naming the server, um, as usual with these, I'm just going to leave it on the default, the NAS uh, uh, model number. Um, I'm going to untick, allow me to access media outside my home, I don't need that, so I'm just going to click next. Um, after it uh, sets the name up of the NAS, um, it will take us to the next category and we can see the next category at the top there is Media Library. Uh, so we'll just wait till it pops over to that. And in Media Library, it's where we're going to add the content and categories. Now I'm only going to do a single category for this setup. I'm just going to do uh, movies or films. So I'm just going to click Add Library. I'm going to choose Films. I'm uh, going to click Next and it'll just move me down to the Add Folders option there. 
now I can browse for media folder. Um, now within QTS, uh, the media folders are going to be under the cache dev one data folder and you'll see all the shares you've got. So in mine, it's just media and we can see it there, the Black Adam movies there. So I know that's the right folder. So I'm just gonna click add. Now in the advanced tab, we've got a few extra options. I'll generally change the certification country to one more appropriate. Um, and there's a lot of different options that you can select here. Uh, for me, I'm just going to click add library. I don't need to change anything else. Um, and I'm happy to click next and finish, but if you have other content like pictures, TV shows, things like that, you would have to add library and you would pick, say, TV shows, photos, music. You know, you can pick different categories and have them all in the list there. Uh, if you forget any, you can always add them later. It, it's not critical to do it at this stage. Uh, so now I'm going to click next and just letting you know about the apps and then click done. And it's already found the movie. So obviously, if you've got a lot of movies or a big database of things, this will take a while to fully populate the list of everything. But we can see this is already ready to go. Um, it's fully functional. Everything's working absolutely great. Now, one thing I do want to check is to make sure the transcoding is working. Now, if you're using the onboard GPU, there's really nothing else left to do. Uh, when you scroll down here, there's a transcoder option, and it's got use hardware acceleration when available. It's already ticked. Um, and that will only be available to do if you have a Plex Pass, uh, which, which this this account that I'm using does have. Uh, so here with this with this um, enabled, it's going to use the onboard graphics of the NAS itself. So even though I've told the NAS to use the NVIDIA card, uh, Plex has its own choice list of which graphics card it's going to use, and it always uses the first one it finds. Um, which is the onboard one. Um, so we do have another video, so I'm gonna pause the video here and I'm gonna come back after I've done the steps, but basically the steps are in this file. So we can send this file to you, or oh, there's a link in the video description uh, to a video where I ran through these steps um, myself. So this is for the TVS H1288X, um, but it's the same process, whether you're on a QTS, QUTS Hero, or any of the NAS. It basically applies to um, any NAS that's got onboard graphics, but you're adding your own one in the PCI Express slots. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, stop the video there, and I'll come back once I've done all those steps, and then we can um, um, show you that that's working just fine. Uh, so give me a minute there, and I'll come back. Okay, so now I've done the, uh, uh, the, the, the NVIDIA fix effectively to tell Plex uh, that it can use the second GPU. Um, so now I'm, I'm basically ready to play a file. Uh, so here I've got the, uh, the Black Adam trailer here. So if I click the, uh, the play button, it's going to start playing. I have uh, muted it down below. Um, so this is going to start playing. And if I come check the, uh, uh, the quality settings, it's playing at original uh, quality, which means if I come look at the transcoder, it's zero. Uh, this uh, little spike here is when I was testing. Uh, I'd done everything correct earlier, but it's just flat. Everything's at zero, basically. It's barely using anything. Um, but if I was to come back here um, and actually change it to transcode, so instead of playing the original file, uh, play something else. So let's say I'll convert it to 1080p from the 4K that the file is. Uh, so when I click that, it's going to convert it down. So now it's playing again. But if I come back to this, we should start seeing a spike. Uh, so there we go. We, we, we see a bit of a spike. It's only a short file, so it will pretty much drop off as soon as Plex has buffered it. Um, but that's now using the external GPU to work with it as well. Um, so that's how you do a, a first time setup um, on Plex uh, with the uh, TVS-H874. Um, if anybody has any questions, uh, do let us know uh, down below. Um, and again, if anybody um, wants to do the, the Plex fix, the video on how to do it is uh, linked in the description down below. Um, so didn't see the, the need to put it in this video again. It's a, it's a fairly drawn out process of typing lots of commands. Um, so if you want to go see that, you can go see the other video of how to use that. Uh, the onboard graphics is pretty good um, for transcoding as well. Um, so I did do some tests with the 4K transcode there and it, it worked just fine with the built-in GPU. Uh, but if you want more capabilities or you've got more users doing more transcodes, then the NVIDIA card can definitely be a, a worthwhile investment for you. Um, so again, anybody has any questions, ask them down below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks very much. Bye.